What's happening everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back. For today's review we have an Android TV box called the Magic C Iron Plus, but I have to be honest, I didn't really see the magic. So for specs we have the Logic S9 12, we have 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage, the device is running Android 6.0.1 and we also have dual band Wi-Fi. As for pricing, well you can get this for around $80, but like anything else it really depends where you buy it from. Starting with a very quick unboxing, so the device comes in a decent looking box, on the front of the box we see a picture of the device and turning the box around we are gonna see some of the specifications. Inside you are gonna find the device itself, you are also gonna find the user manual, the user manual is in English and it's got some pictures, there is also a remote control and this time around we have a different looking remote control, however you are better off to use a wireless keyboard than mouse for a much better experience. And aside from that you are gonna find a power adapter and an HDMI cable. The device itself it's made out of plastic entirely, so the top, the sides, the back, everything it's made out of plastic and I have to say that it doesn't look as cool as we've seen in those pictures online. On top we have some blue LED lights that makes it look a bit different than the most other TV boxes around. Now on the left hand side you're gonna find two USB ports and on the right hand side you're gonna find another USB port, so we have a total of three USB ports. There is also a slot for an SD card and since we have Android 6.0.1 running on this device you can easily install an SD card as internal storage. Out of the 32 gigs of internal storage that comes with it we have about 26 gigs left but the speeds that I got for the internal storage are among the best that I've seen for any TV box. And moving to the back of the device there we have the port for the power adapter, we also have the optical out, HDMI, AV and lastly the network adapter port. I've tried DTS sound and Dolby Digital sound while using Kodi, but unfortunately DTS sound doesn't work whenever you're using Kodi, so you can only get Dolby Digital sound. Now if you have a video file that has DTS sound, you can still um, watch that and uh, have DTS sound if you're using the built-in video player. For benchmark results, I tried the Antutu benchmark, the Geekbench 4 and the iStorm Extreme, and even though the scores weren't the highest that I've seen for the Amlogic S9 12, they were decent enough for this device. For connectivity we have dual band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and I'm glad to say that they both work um, very good. So the speeds that I got over the 2.4 and the 5 GHz Wi-Fi bands are good and among the best that I've seen for any TV box. Unfortunately even though the Wi-Fi connectivity is quite good I wasn't able to use Miracast so no matter what I've done I was not able to mirror my phone screen to this device. So at this time I'm gonna say that Miracast doesn't work on it. And for those of you that are interested, this device doesn't come with root access from the factory and like most other TV boxes from China, we are not going to be able to watch Netflix in HD based on the digital rights management information that we get. For online streaming apps, I used the YouTube app that comes pre-installed with this device, so this is not the official YouTube app, and I was able to watch videos at 1080p, however, not at 1080p, at 60 frames per second, so only 1080p. Now, all the videos that I watched seem to go fairly smooth without any issues. I've also tried another streaming app called ModBro and all the streams that I opened from there um, seem to work fine without any issues. So for online streaming I think you're gonna be fine with this device. And we are moving on to Kodi. So this device comes pre-installed with Kodi 17. Now the strange thing about this is the fact that Kodi doesn't show up anywhere. So it doesn't show up um, in your installed apps. So the only way of actually opening and finding Kodi is if you go into settings and at settings you open your apps, downloaded apps, and you're gonna find it in there. So that's the only way of actually opening Kodi. It comes pre-installed with a few add-ons, but I was only able to find one add-on that was working. All the other ones um, weren't working. However, if you have a working add-on, it does work um, fine without any issues. And moving on to gaming, I played Real Racing 3, and even though the game did okay, I believe that I've seen that game being played better on other devices in the past. So I'm gonna let you guys watch um, me playing Real Racing 3 for a few seconds. <laughs> The main reason why I wouldn't recommend this TV box is the Google Play Store that comes pre-installed. So if you search for apps in the Google Play Store, well none of the apps are compatible. But in reality they are all compatible and you can just silo them. Now for a box that costs about $80 to have to sideload every single app that you want to use, yeah that's not acceptable and that's the main reason why I wouldn't actually recommend this device. 
Now that you've seen how this looks and you have a better idea about its performance, I'm going to start recording the screen. I want to show you the launcher. I want to show you what video files um, work on this and what video files don't. So basically to tell you how this would perform for day-to-day -day usage. First of all, the launcher. So nothing too exciting here. You can add some apps um, on top here, but realistically, you can't really do that much with this launcher. You can always install a different launcher from the Google Play Store. Actually, sideload the launcher because the Google Play Store doesn't work. Another thing, we don't have the navigation bar at the bottom of the screen, so there is no way of actually bringing that up. And that means that we don't have the notification tab on top of the screen either. For apps, we get a few apps that come pre-installed. So we get uh, this app installer, the browser, Facebook. Uh, we also have the file browser here, uh, the gallery browser. Uh, we get Megabox HD, however, it doesn't actually work. Um, we get Modbro, Netflix, the Play Store, which is useless. And lastly, the YouTube app. The settings app looks identical to the settings app that we've seen for uh, past uh, Android TV boxes. Here at the network, you can connect to the Wi-Fi or through a cable, depending on uh, your setup. A display here, you can change the screen resolution. And uh, this will be different depending on the TV that uh, you have connected to the TV box, but in my case it's 1080p. At the screen position you can just zoom in or zoom out. Uh, the screen at sounds, uh, again depending on your setup, you can change uh, the sound output. And if we click uh, on about here, you can see the device's name. So Iron Plus and um, the Android version, it's Android 6.0.1. For languages, like most of these Android uh, TV boxes, we have a lot of languages available. And I'm just going to scroll through them and hopefully you can see the one uh, that you may be interested in. So definitely a lot of languages uh, here. And next we're going to check out some video files and see which ones uh, work and uh, which ones don't. So we're going to start with um, this one right here. I already opened this one so I know that uh, it works fine. I'm just going to skip uh, to the middle. But the image seems uh, kind of dark um, in my opinion. So uh, again, I skipped forward a bit. And as you can see, this one um, does fine. Stopping this one and moving to the next one. This is the next uh, file right here. And this one uh, also does good um, as you can see. So let me fast forward a bit. So it doesn't do too bad. We'll stop this one and we'll move to the next file. This is a 4K file at uh, 59 frames per second. And again, uh, it seems kind of uh, dark uh, compared to other uh, devices that we've seen in the past. However, the video does seem to go fairly smooth, but definitely a bit uh, darker. All right, so this one also works. We'll move to another 4K file uh, at 50 frames per second. So a bit slow at the beginning, but uh, after that uh, it seems to work fine. So we'll skip forward, and as you can see, this one also does uh, fairly good. Moving to the next file, so let's try this 720p file. This one should uh, go without any issues. I'm just gonna skip forward, and uh, once again it works um, very good. We'll stop this one and we'll move to the next file. This is the next file uh, that we have. And I'm just going to skip towards the end. And this one also does pretty good. Moving to the next file, let's see which ones we have. Um, we have this one right here. And this one also works uh, without any issues. So most files that we're going to try on this uh, device will uh, work good. But uh, again, uh, DTS uh, sound doesn't actually work uh, with coding, which is a shame. Uh, but uh, it is what it is. So this is the last file that we're going to try. This is another 4K file, but at 24 frames per second or something like that. So this one also does uh, good. So basically all the files that uh, we tried uh, seem to do okay without any issues. Let's see if this one uh, works good as well. So yeah, this one also seems to be going uh, good too. And to conclude this video, I wouldn't actually buy this device just because it's expensive and it doesn't work that well. So if you're looking for something cheaper that works well, I recommend that you check out the MX3 G2. And I'm gonna leave a link to that um, in the video's description and uh, also to my review for it. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.